Let's talk about procedural fairness letters in immigration to Canada. But before I move forward, please subscribe to our channel and enable notifications. What is procedural fairness? When you submit an application for immigration to Canada, visa, study permit, work permit, etc., it is the responsibility of the immigration officers to follow certain guides called procedural fairness. These procedural fairness steps are rooted in a landmark decision by the Supreme Court of Canada called Baker versus Canada. Simply put, it means that the officer must make sure that fair and square is the name of the game. In other words, when they process your application, if they want to make a significant decision that will adversely affect you, they have no choice but to follow certain guidelines. Keep in mind that the burden of proof is on you. So when you submit an application, you have to submit a complete, open, and honest and transparent application to the officer. However, the officers from time to time may decide to interview you or ask you for further documentation. The documentation could be asked because if they have referred to external or extrinsic sources such as websites, social media, etc., and that will affect their decision, or they have realized or they suspect that you have misrepresented. For example, some of their documents are falsified or you have hidden key information about the process. In those situations, most of the time, the officers will send a letter to the applicant called a procedure or fairness letter. A PFL or procedure or fairness letter could also be sent to you because the officer believes that you are inadmissible to Canada for other reasons. For example, you are inadmissible because of a medical issue that you have, or you are inadmissible because of criminality or other areas. If it becomes more serious, for example, security reasons, in those situations, you may be invited to an interview by a CSIS officer, which is the anti-spy agency of Canada. But if inadmissibility is because of other reasons, or if it's even security, but not to that extent, then the officers normally send you a PFL. So in other words, a PFL or procedure fairness letter is sent by an officer because they want clarification on certain key areas of your application or because they believe that for some reason you have misrepresented. Don't expect the officer to send you a PFL just because. In other words, if you miss submitting a documentation, it is likely the officer will refuse your application without issuing a PFL. Imagine you have received a procedure of fairness letter. In that situation, you need to ask yourself, what should I do? And depending on the situation, if you find out that the officer is correct or incorrect, then your approach would be different. If the officer is incorrect, then in those situations, you can refute the officer. In other words, you can present enough documentation and evidence to convince the officer otherwise. You show them that the suspicion that they have is not real. They should not be worried about your application. For example, if they say that we believe that you misrepresented about your educational credentials, then you submit enough documentation about your educational credentials such as a West report or another uh, ECA report, or maybe some uh, documents from your classmates, pictures, etc., that corroborate what you are saying. And of course, it depends on the exact wording of the officer. But if you believe the officer is correct, 
then in those situations you need to come clean explain why you made that mistake show that you are remorseful and in certain situations you may ask them to withdraw the application when you receive a pfl it is very unlikely the officer agrees on withdrawing the application but that could be an option that you offer to them sometimes if it's the issue of inadmissibility you may come up with alternative uh, options for example you may say what if you change my application for a simple work permit application to a temporary resident permit and etc these cases could become very complicated so it is in your best interest if you receive a PFL, you consult with a professional that has dealt with PFLs in the past. And that person, of course, needs to be a licensed lawyer or an immigration consultant or somebody who is allowed to represent you to the immigration authorities under Section 91 of the Immigration Act. Sometimes when you receive a PFL, you also deal with very tight deadlines. In those situations, you can communicate with the officer and request an extended deadline. And also, at the same time, you may ask them for further clarifying what they mean by that PFL and what exactly they expect from you. Because sometimes the communication that you receive from them is extremely brief and you don't know what they exactly mean by that procedure of fairness letter. So keep that in mind as well, that you may request more explanation by the officer. You may ask for extended period of time, but keep that in mind. They do not always grant the extended times. They do not always answer your questions. So keep that in mind and do your best to meet the initial deadline. You may also request uh, an ATIP or access to information and privacy to receive a copy of your GCMS records and the officer's notes. Those could also help you have a better understanding of the situation. Having said that, a, an ATIP request usually takes about a month to two months in certain situations, even more, and it may pass the deadline. That's why when you are submitting an ATIP request or asking for officer's notes, you also need to uh, ask the officer to give you extension. So in other words, do your best to meet the deadline, but if you receive an extended period of time, then you may work on your application and prepare all the necessary documentations and respond to the officer's concerns or ask for forgiveness if it's the case, etc., etc. And keep that in mind, PFL is a serious kind of letter that you will receive and it could affect your future in terms of any interactions with the immigration authorities. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Al Parsai. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. I have represented clients from 55 countries in the past 11 years. I teach immigration courses at various institutions. I'm the author of the 88 Tips on Immigration to Canada, which has been identified as the best seller by Amazon.ca under the Immigration Law Books. Please subscribe to our channel, enable notifications. I will come with more and more useful tips and videos. See you soon. Thank you.